Before we get into the interview with producer Nick Searcy, I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video. Are you frustrated with this new administration like so many of us are, where we're seeing gas prices going up, maybe your retirement fund is dwindling, you're losing money, and you're looking for a new approach? Well, Noble Gold is a great place to start. If you're looking for an IRA or a 401k, Precious Metals is the way to go. And this month, Noble Gold is gifting a one ounce solid silver American Eagle coin with every IRA or 401k taken out. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's Noble Gold investments.com. This is treason. Where is he? Officer, I can't breathe. I can't even. Hey, man. I'm Nick Searcy. On January 6, 2021, I went to Washington, D.C., along with multitudes of other Americans, because we believed that the election was stolen. I saw with my own eyes what happened that day. And what they show you on the media doesn't tell half the story. Here's the Capitol and here's people going in there. They didn't show all of this out here. Did I tell you I have claustrophobia? I saw people of all colors, races, creeds, Asian Americans for Trump, blacks for Trump. I even saw a guy wearing a shirt that said fags for Trump. And since I'm from California, I knew that guy. We're from Iowa. Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here standing with my fellow patriots. We all standing for America. Despite what the media tells you, boots on ground definitely say something different. There is a sea of nothing but red, white, and blue patriots. These are damn working people. Right? They want their country back. Oh, we're marching for the Constitution. We're not. It ain't really about Trump. It's about us now. They're, they're attacking us, and we're tired of it. We had a foreign attack, and they had domestic support. This is about individual liberty. We don't believe the media. We don't believe you. We don't believe, we'd have no faith in our institutions. The FBI is now being sent out by Joe Biden to punish people. We're at war. They're hunting down Trump supporters like dogs. Let me say that again, we're at war. 147 days since my wife was murdered and executed. The FBI, you have a federal search warrant for the property. Come out with your I step hands. out, I have red dots all over my chest. They broke the door down. Hands up, hands up, put your hands on the wall, hands up. I was in jail for four straight days. I, I kept banging on the door saying, I have never had a phone call. The sixth was all deception. The level of sophistication and tactic is immense. Fire guys from Portland. I've seen people from Portland here, Antifa. I was paid to pretend to protest. We need to come together as Americans again and remember why we started this country. An insurrection? Without arms? What are they talking about? And why are they lying? Punishment, the movie. Just finished watching it today. I have on the producer of this film, uh, Nick Searcy, who's going to talk about the, the whole, what happened on January 6th, because he's got a lot of videos that people have published and people that haven't published were afraid to bring it out there to the, to the public about what happened on that day. There were infiltrators, as we know. Look, for me, I was actually there on January 6th. I was there at all three rallies. January 6th was a historic day. It was a peaceful protest. We know the truth. A lot of us that were there, there were over 2 million people that showed up that day. There were people that were armed in this insurrection. 
with selfie sticks, iPhones, and US flags chanting, God bless America. You know, we were there to support our president and find out what happened during the stolen election. And subsequently, honorable Americans were uh, vilified. And we see in, in this film, which we're gonna talk about, you're gonna see in this film that comes out on Thanksgiving, how not just that the FBI and the intelligence agencies were um, were weaponized against American people, a lot of them, elderly people, were called domestic terrorists, right? The media completely lying about the day. We know this, we know what happened. But with this film that I just finished watching was, it was, let me tell you, honestly, I am so pissed off after watching it. Um, nostalgic of that day. Obviously, there were people that did storm, storm the Capitol building. But what you see in this film is how the Capitol Police moved the barriers and let people in. You hear eyewitness testimony of people who were actually there. And we saw the brutal death of Ashley. And in this film, you're actually going to hear from her husband, which is the first time he speaks publicly. So joining me today is producer Nick Searcy, who is also an actor from Hollywood, but in many movies such as Shape of Water, Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, Oscar-nominated Moneyball, Castaway, one of my favorite movies, Nell, The Fugitive. I mean, he's been in so many. Nick, before we talk about what happened on that day, after doing all this research, what was the most surprising thing you found out while making this film? Well, I mean, we made the film because I was there that day like you were and nothing on the media matched up with what I experienced. So we started sort of talking to people about their experience there. And as it went along, we started talking to people who had actually been uh, uh, approached, I say, by the FBI. They, people that have had their doors broken down and their family members handcuffed and, and people that were never been arrested for anything before in their lives that were being treated like drug cartel leaders or serial killers. 80 officers, SWAT teams showing up at their house, armored vehicles. I mean, it's I, that was shocking. And I think that that, that changed the direction of the film. Um, it, it, it kind of started out as a film about, you know, this is, this is the government trying to suppress free speech. And then it became like, no, this is the government trying to punish people who dare disagree with them and send out a message that if you try this, this is what's going to happen to you. And that's how the focus of the film changed to the punishment that these people are receiving. That's I mean, capital punishment is a perfect name for the film because in the film, we see a 13 year old girl who was handcuffed when her father was arrested for simply walking in the Capitol. And as you mm -hmm. said, and we mentioned before, it, it is a weaponization to. Well, actually, just to be clear, he didn't yeah. even go in the Capitol. He did not oh. enter the Capitol. No, in fact, I don't think anybody that we interviewed in the movie actually went inside except for the two 74-year-old uh, twin sisters who said they walked in, they talked to the police who were lined up against the wall, and they said, is it all right if we're here? And they, the policeman said yes. And they took a couple of pictures. They went home. Three weeks later, the FBI showed up at their door. Mm -hmm. And like knocking down their door. I mean, the same thing that Simone Gold experienced and her assistant was there as well. Same thing um, that these these grandmothers experienced where, again, vilifying them, making it uh, uh, showing Americans, if you stand up against the government and their decisions mm -hmm. uh, and the media, their propaganda, if you stand up against it and you do not take in the narrative we will come after you in a public way. A lot of people that are in the film, again, these are witness testimonies, but also personal experiences of, like you said, people that didn't even go into the Capitol building, but how they were vilified. Their neighbors spoke out against them and ratted them out to, to federal officers. And then also people were losing their businesses. This one gentleman lost his business in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the most disturbing things, too, is what the effect of this, all this propaganda coming from the media saying that this was just a violent protest of these white supremacist, racist Trump supporters. What that does is it it empowers the, your neighbors, your community to turn against you because the government has just vilified you, said that you were uh, a terrible person that needed to be uh, punished. And Don't so make now you have neighbors turning on you. 
And the one guy from my hometown in North Carolina, they, they basically just destroyed his business with bad reviews. He said he had friends that he had had for a long time who turned on him because, uh, you know, it was published in the paper that he was arrested. And the narrative storyline that the politicians and the media have been pushing is that everybody who went to Washington on January 6th is a violent racist. That's right. And they had these billboards made specifically for people saying, hey, do you know anyone that stormed the Capitol in this violent insurrection? By the way, most of these people were not armed. They were not armed. And I say in the film, most of them are were by age or older. I mean, so what are we going to storm the Capitol with? Like, Polygrip and blood pressure medicine, and but you know we're all sixty-two okay. or something. <laughs> but but you know, and again, the irony, and we we understand this because we're we're actually we're we're the real woke crowd. The irony is on January twentieth, two thousand seventeen, when Antifa stormed D.C. on the inauguration of President Donald J. Trump. That was yeah. an actual, that was a real insurrection. They were throwing um they were throwing Molotov cocktails. They were burning limos on fire and cars on fire, destroying businesses, throwing rocks, throwing all types of, you know, look like hand grenades, but obviously they were, they were full of smoke. I mean, that was an act, that was an actual violent insurrection. Yeah. Where everyone in the Capitol building, the ones that did storm it, and I'm not saying that was the right thing to do, but what you see in the film is that the barriers were opened. They were invited in. You see all the Capitol police saying, go on in. Those two grandmothers, by the way, that were, um, that got in trouble and they got raided by the FBI, they said, well, we asked the Capitol Police Guard, is it okay if we're here? You guys are okay with us being here? He's, and he nodded his head. Yeah, why not? Yeah, and so many people who you see footage in the film of them, even the ones that went inside the Capitol, most of them just stayed inside the ropes and looked at the paintings and walked around. And it's not like they were acting on, two, on uh, Trump's inauguration. There, nobody in there setting fires. There's nobody in there doing anything violent. You know, they're they're in there waving flags. And and another point we make in the film is that, you know, they talk about Trump made the speech and incited all the violence. Well, the break in at the Capitol started before Trump had finished the speech. So who were those people? They certainly weren't people that were listening to the speech because the speech wasn't being covered on any media. Nobody was broadcasting it. The only way you could hear it is if you were there. So. If the break-in started, the break of the windows, breaking of the windows started before Trump finished, mm -hmm. couldn't have been people that he inspired to do it. And it was shocking, too, where you show that the media actually took two clips together of President Donald Trump saying, go to the Capitol. We need to use any means necessary, um, yeah. uh, you know, to paraphrase. But he really yeah. was saying, go to the Capitol and peacefully assemble. But the media obviously put two pieces together. It made it seem like he was telling them, come on, we got to we got to arm up here. Yeah. And if and that's the thing, it's like, why are they lying? Why do they have to do that? Because they're pushing a narrative that isn't true. They are propagandizing everyone and they wouldn't have to edit Trump's speech if they were just there to tell the truth about what happened that day. And that's why also you didn't see any media covering, you know, like you talked about before, that there were two million peaceful people there singing and praying, saying the Star Spangled Banner and the, and the Pledge of Allegiance. And the media showed you none of that. In fact, there's somebody in the film that comments about how, where's the media? I haven't seen any media here at all. Yeah, no CNN, no Fox, no no MSNBC. Um, here, here's me. I, I was there that day. I saw I was sitting on top of porta potties because there was absolutely no room. There was a sea of people and it was not the best situation, but we wanted to see President Trump speak. Sure. And we got there a little bit late because we needed to, to have a little extra rest. But anyway, because um, we've been traveling around the country, but it was shocking to see how the media portrayed the event because it was such a beautiful, peaceful day. And the only shots that, that they showed, the only video footage that they shot was these violent, um, you know, it, it is violent to, to break down windows and to break down doors. But as we saw in the film, you're going to see so much footage of these instigators Mm -hmm. who were saying, you know, MAGA this way, MAGA that way. We don't talk to each other like that. No, <laughs> no, we don't say that. We don't say MAGA this way. We don't see, you won't see us changing in a bush, changing our clothes quickly, putting on a MAGA hat. Um, you know, of course, if we're cold, we'll put on a sweater, but they're changing from 
you know, from one alpha to another in groups and jumping in and screaming at people. And, and you'll see, you also see people uh, pushing people towards the Capitol. And, yeah, and yeah. as one gentleman mentioned in the film, he said he was, I think he was an FBI officer or he was some kind of, um, I, think, I think it was the FBI officer who has seen uh, violent insurrections in other countries. And yeah, he yeah. said that it was awfully odd that there were people that were sticking out, directing people into the Capitol. And when he came up to tell people, hey guys, don't go in there, something's wrong, you got it, just leave. He was violently thrown away and told, stop. Mm -hmm. Stop telling people not to go into the Capitol. Yeah, that we have testimony from a guy who went there with a person he knew was an FBI informant because he was a good friend. And all day long, the FBI informant tried to get him to go in the building, tried to get him to go inside. And, it, and he refused. And some of the footage that got, you know, we had so much stuff that we had to lose some of it. But one of the instigators, there's a clip that we had in the movie at one point of her saying, we've got to go inside. They're hurting our Trumpy bear. You know, and it's like, we don't call him our Trumpy bear. I mean, that's, 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 that's their idea of who we are. That's not who we are. Yeah, that's a big sign of they are not with us. And you see people calling them out. We saw the clips on social yeah. media, and it's great that you put it in there as well, where people said, this is, this is not us. This is Antifa, Antifa, Antifa. You know yeah. what, the, the, the most heartbreaking, one of the most heartbreaking parts of the film was when, um, uh, Abbott's her, not, not Abbott, I forgot, I was mispronouncing. Ashley. Ashley, thank you. Ashley Babbitt, her husband finally gave his side of the story and he basically talked about what it was like, what Ashley was like, number one, but also yeah. what it was like hearing the news of her tragic death. She was unarmed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was his first interview, public interview he's ever done. What, what, what did you feel about that moment interviewing him? Well, it was just heartbreaking. I mean, it, it's awful to hear somebody talk about that, watching their their loved one die on television, and you can't do anything about it. He tells a story about how he couldn't find any news for so long, and he had to keep the television on because it was the only only news he had. And it, 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 it's terrifying, and it and it also it, it points up this this fact that you know Ashley Babbitt has been totally demonized by the press. The propaganda has been that she's some crazed right-wing Trump supporter. And what we really wanted to do in this film is just show you, no, this was a great patriotic young woman, an 11 year Air Force veteran, a, a beautiful person who, you know, helped people on the street, helped, you know, cooking dogs. I mean, they've made her into a monster. And we wanted to take the time in this movie to, to show you who she really was and humanize her. And, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I, I've i seen the movie a hundred times and I can't really watch that Aaron Babbitt thing anymore because it makes me cry every time. Yeah, it was a beautiful portrayal of her life, a lot that I did not know about her. I mean, she was such an amazing woman. She yeah, yeah. would, you know, take in stray dogs. She one time stopped her car when there was a pedestrian, a woman running and she looked a little bit nervous. And so she pulled over and said, Hey, are you okay? Her husband was right there. And the woman said, I'm late for my job interview. And she said, well, jump in. I'll, I'll drive there. I mean, total stranger off the street and took her to her job interview. And sure enough, this woman got her job. She yeah, got that yeah. job and came to, to her office, Ashley's office and said, thank you. Actually called her and said, thank you so much. I got the job. I mean, this is the kind of woman that Ashley was. And there's a lot more other tidbits about her life. You will hear from Aaron in this film, which by the way, capital punishment, the movie.com, that's where you can watch it on Thanksgiving day. I want to bring it back to something we were just talking about, which was neighbor riding out neighbor. You know, I was born in the Soviet union. I, I came here, thank God my family brought me here when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I've heard stories growing up from my great grandparents and grandparents of the stories that their parents have been through and that they have been through with the Nazis in, in, you know, in, in the 40s, but also the communists in the 20s. And it is very similar tactics. The way that you take over a country, which Lenin was saying violently with coercion, is to have a revolution. So you need two, two sides pinned against each other. So what the Bolsheviks were doing, they were successful at propagandizing what was actually happening 
um, you know, the, the SAR is evil. We, we need to, you know, we, we, we're missing bread. And, and a lot of the issues Russia was facing was because of the remnants of World War One. There were a lot of issues. There was still problems with, you know, with, with, with food and all that. But they blamed it all on the SAR, radicalized and galvanized a group of lefties, right? These mm -hmm. socialists right. and used fear and intimidation to propel the narrative that they need to have a violent insurrection. And so when they took over, they used the same ta tactics that our federal government just, just used right now. Yeah. By having billboards saying, if you see your neighbor, if you know anyone in the community that has been to the Capitol on January 6th, call this number. That is straight up a communist tactic that the Red Guards, that the Bolsheviks used in Russia, they literally said, if your neighbor has spoken out against the Bolsheviks, against us, let us know. So yeah. my family told me they remember that. My great grandparents remember that because if they you, they would say anything against Lenin, anything against communism, if their neighbor overheard it through the wall, they were told to go to the Red Guard and tell them, hey, my neighbor's talking bad about you and bad, get bad about, uh, against the government. And what they found out the next day, that person was missing. Mm -hmm. Many times could never find them again. Some of them were hung in the street, hanged in the street as an example of what not to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, th yeah, that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening here. I mean, it's, it's horrible to see that. Because by weaponizing your neighbors against you, it, it makes it easier for the government to, uh, to to oppress you, to put you under their thumb. Because now you have become an enemy of the people, you know, which is a lot of what they, uh, a lot of the jargon that they use. And uh, I've, I've heard stories like yours, Anna, from uh, friends of mine from Romania, friends of mine from Cuba who've, who've gone through, seen this thing, seen this kind of thing happen in their own country and are shocked to see it happening here in America. This is what they came here to get away from. And now my Romanian friend, Andy, who appears briefly in the film, he's, he's always joking with me. Might be time for me to go back to Romania. It's a little better over there you know, after we got rid of communism and it's coming in here. Yeah, I mean, this is, I call it the USSA. It's not no longer the USA. Yeah. Um, it's really looking like the USSA. So you having done all this research and putting this film together, what is your final opinion on what happened on that day? Was Trump set up? Did he, obviously Trump didn't know that this was going to happen, but do you think that they set him up and then this whole thing happened and what happened in your opinion? I believe it was a setup. I believe that they were disappointed that they didn't get exactly what they wanted. But the fact that there was no media there, the fact that uh, Trump suggested the National Guard and Nancy Pelosi and everybody rejected that, there was not enough security there. They knew there was going to be a huge protest. And I think that really what they wanted was more bloodshed. I think that what they were going for was not just one Ashley Babbitt. They wanted uh, something like what happened in the Ukraine. They wanted 100 people to go down and they wanted to create a situation that they could then use to demonize everybody who voted for Trump, everybody who was there that day, and anybody who disagrees with the Democrat Party. That was the, the point of it. And I think that they were disappointed that the only person, that there was only one person uh, that they could kill and, and claim was, a, was an insurrectionist. I think they wanted more bloodshed because the point of all this is to create chaos. It, it, and it goes through everything that we're seeing now. It goes through the Rittenhouse thing. They allowed those riots to happen in Kenosha. They took the police away so that the riots could continue. And then the only possibility for private citizens who had property there was that they had to defend themselves. And so when Rittenhouse did defend himself, they thought, now we've got them. Now we can take this kid and we can demonize and criminalize self-defense so that they will have no recourse if the mob comes for them, and then their only source for protection is the government. It, it, it goes through everything that they do. They are trying to terrorize people into never, ever disagreeing with them ever again. Yeah, and what is interesting is on January 20th, 2017, when the left was actually violently rioting and setting cars ablaze, it was 
an example of an insurrection where yeah. they were actually extremely violent, hurting people, um, businesses, and trying to get them out, right? But right. The, the, the thing is with that, for some reason, all their charges were dropped. Their yeah. charges were dropped and they were let go. They, they were released pretty quickly um, after January 20th, whereas here, when it has to do with, with patriots, people who, by the way, love the Constitution, who are the most, the biggest allies of the Constitution, yeah, the government is completely ignoring the Constitution and, and, and breaking and their, their individual rights and storming their house. I mean, the story with Simone Gold, how they you know, stormed in her house. Um, again, private citizens, regular people, grandmas who came to just look at what's going on and just peacefully walked in there, were completely vilified, handcuffed, arrested, put into a, a prison, put into a jail where they stayed there, I think some people eight days, 10 days. Is it true that there are people still in those county jails right now and yeah. there's no word from them? No, they're still there. They, you know, they're they're in the, the worst kind of conditions you can imagine. The, the jail cell is like something in a third world country. The mattresses covered with bugs. The, 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 the toilets don't work. Julie Kelly at American Greatness has been a champion of these guys and that, are, that they're still locked away. And there's a really heartbreaking story about them that every night at 9 p.m. they all sing the Star Spangled Banner, all the prisoners. It's just like, you know, the, it's, it's, it is their ritual every night. And if you stand outside the jail, you can kind of hear it. And it's it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see these people vilified in this way. Uh, like one of the people that we talked to in the movie, when the FBI raided his house, he had a box of pocket constitutions that he would use to pass out to children or something. They took this box of pocket constitutions and laid it out on his garage floor and took a photograph of it like it was evidence. Like this is a contraband thing that you have in your house that proves you are some sort of radical, right-wing, insane racist. You know, it, it's it's shocking to see how far we've fallen, really. Yeah, I, when I saw that in the film, I was shocked as well. He's armed with the Constitution of the United <laughs> States. And that's um, subversive literature, yeah. <laughs> all right, exactly. Terrorist activity, domestic terrorist. Um, again, you guys can watch this film, Capital Punishment, Thanksgiving Day, you can watch it right on this website. I want to ask you a uh, last question before we go. I mean, you are from Hollywood. You're an, you're, you've been an actor for a long time. You've been in all these incredible movies. How are you now with, with Hollywood? Do Hollywood absolutely hate you? Are you blacklisted or what are you experiencing? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if I'm blacklisted or not. Uh, in Hollywood, when you don't get a part, they don't call you up and tell you why you didn't get it, you know, so... <laughs> They would never call me and just say, we're not working with you because you voted for Trump. They wouldn't get away with that. They just don't return the call. But I will say this. I've, uh, I've been very fortunate. I've been busier in the last year than I've ever been. I did uh, acted in two feature films at the same time we were trying to put this documentary together, one with Nicolas Cage and uh, one with Gina Carano, the uh, Daily Wire movie called Terror on the Prairie. And... Uh, I'm kind of the title role in that. I'm, I'm the terror. So um, I, I'm, you know, I'm busier than I've ever been. Like I was kidding with you before, I, I work way more than I want to. Um, so I'm not worried about Hollywood anymore. I think basically Hollywood has has basically destroyed its own industry. They have they have basically broken trust with a vast number of the American people who just don't trust anything they say anymore. They have demonized us. And I think a new thing's gonna spring up in its place, like what's happening with the Daily Wire, what Kevin Sorbo's doing. You know, there's a lot of lot of new Hollywoods that are gonna spring up. And I think that uh, those places are gonna do fine. And if I don't work in Hollywood anymore, I, I think I'll still get enough work. I'm not worried about it. Amen. And it rattles them because they want everyone to watch their movies, their demonic movies. Again, yeah. you can watch Capital Punishment on Thanksgiving Day this Thursday. You can pre-order today for $9.99 on CapitalPunishmentTheMovie.com. There's the trailer there as well. Here is the countdown. Two more days. I'm telling you, I just watched it. It's a must watch. 
Again, there's a lot of clips I saw in there that I've never seen before, to be honest with you, infuriated me seeing it. But hearing some perspectives from eyewitnesses I've never heard from before was really helpful to piece together what actually happened on that day. Nick, is there anything else you want to say before we go? Well, what about my jokes? Did you think my jokes were funny? The jokes in the movie? Oh, yeah. And I love your little, you had a little mock trial as well. <laughs> yes. Which is hilarious. Yes. My testimony before the January 6th committee is, is pretty good. Yeah. That was really good. Well, you did a great job. Excellent job. Thank you so much for, again, making this film. We need to share this film with as many people as possible. Even your lefty friends that you haven't talked to that's been ignoring you for, you know, whatever. Buy, purchase this movie for them. Send yeah. them the link and say, hey, listen, I know what you heard in the media, but take a look at this film. And I want to know what you honestly think after you watch it, because you're going to see a lot of amazing people in there chanting, God bless America and the Constitution as well. So praise God, Nick. Again, thanks for coming on. And uh, I can't wait till everyone sees this film. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for your courage, too, and standing up and being in Washington on January 6th. And thank you for the, all that you're doing to, uh, to try to help our country. I really appreciate it. Glory to God. It's a team effort of patriots. Bless you guys. This is treason. Where is he? Officer, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Hey, man. I'm Nick Searcy. On January 6, 2021, I went to Washington, D.C., along with multitudes of other Americans because we believed that the election was stolen. I saw with my own eyes what happened that day. And what they show you on the media doesn't tell half the story. Here's the Capitol and here's people going in there. They didn't show all of this out here. Did I tell you I have claustrophobia? I saw people of all colors, races, creeds, Asian Americans for Trump, blacks for Trump. I even saw a guy wearing a shirt that said bags for Trump. And since I'm from California, I knew that guy. We're from Iowa. Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here standing with my fellow patriots. We all standing for America. Despite what the media tells you, boots on ground definitely say something different. There is a sea of nothing but red, white, and blue patriots. These are damn working people right here. They want their country back. Oh, we're marching for the Constitution. We're not, it ain't really about Trump. It's about us now. They're, they're attacking us and we're tired of it. We had a foreign attack and they had domestic support. This is about individual liberty. We don't believe the media. We don't believe you. We don't believe, we'd have no faith in our institutions. The FBI is now being sent out by Joe Biden to punish people. We're at war. They're hunting down Trump supporters like dogs. You say that again, we're at war. 147 days since my wife was murdered and executed. The FBI, you have a federal search warrant for the property. Come out with your I step hands. out, I have red dots all over my chest. They broke the door down. Put your hands up, hands up, put your hands on the wall, hands up. I was in jail for four straight days. I, I kept banging on the door saying, I have never had a phone call. The sixth was all deception. The level of sophistication and tactic is immense. Oh, I recognize you from Portland. Uh, I'm seeing people from Portland here, Antifa. I was paid to pretend to protest. We need to come together as Americans again and remember why we started this country. An insurrection without arms? What are they talking about? And why are they lying? <laughs>